Welcome to Getting Started with UGUI. This video is specifically designed for version 1 of UGUI on Windows. If you're looking for the OS X or Ubuntu versions, click here or in the description. In this video, we're going to be covering what UGUI is and how to get started, what you're going to need to download, how to set up your project, and just really the basic concept of how to use the UGUI framework, which is taking a command line argument and abstracting that into a UI element. That sounds complex, but trust me, it's super easy and it'll only take a few minutes here. So the first thing we're going to need to do is go to UGUI.io and click the download button and then go to nwjs.io and download the Windows 64 or Windows 32-bit version. If you don't know which one you need, click on Start, go to Computer, right-click, go to Properties, and then you'll see System Type of 32 or 64-bit. Um, once you have those downloaded, in your Downloads folder, you're going to need to extract your nwjs project to a specific folder. I put mine in the C colon slash nw. Um, you'll probably have to create that folder, and then drag that in and just rename it so it's just the version number. There we go. And then you'll need to extract the UGUI project. I'm gonna throw it on my desktop. You can put it wherever you like, and you can also rename this to whatever your project name is. Uh, for this video, um, I'll show you how to run this app. And to do that, you right click, go to new, shortcut, and you need to put the path to wherever you extracted your NW file. So for me, it was c colon slash nw slash version name slash nw.exe space, and then you put the path to your project. If your project contains a space anywhere in it, make sure to wrap it in quotes like that. There we go. Next, and then name it whatever you want. So now whenever you op uh, run the shortcut, it'll automatically launch uh, nwjs and point it to this folder. It'll then read your package.json file and launch the index inside of nwjs. So basically it runs your app. Um, this is what UGUI looks like out of the box. It is a lot of stuff. It does a ton of things for you out of the box to save you a lot of time. Uh, but we're not gonna be covering all of this stuff. We're just gonna be covering how to convert your command line arguments into these UI elements, these drop down boxes and color picker and slider and stuff. So to do that, to make this as simple as possible, I'm going to replace my index with this guy right here. And that's gonna make life a lot easier because it's much simpler. We open it up, this is all it is. It's a checkbox, it's uh, some text, a text box, and then a run button. So it's basically three things. Um, let's go ahead and open this up. This index file looks like this. It looks like a very basic um, HTML document. You've got doc type, HTML and head, end head, body, and HTML, end head. So um, uh, all this stuff right here is very basic. Um, we have one style which tells it to hide the args, which are these guys, so they don't show this text on the screen. Um, we've got jQuery and UGUI. And then we've got the two main important parts, the command block and the form block. So you'll see that these are related to each other the ID of the form block and the executable both match each other. So what that means is when you click that run button that's on the page, since it has a class of send command args, it's going to look at the form that it's inside of, see the ID of it, and then find if there's a command block which has an executable that matches that ID. And then it will run this command block. So when you click the send command args button, it finds this, which then links it up to here, and then it runs these. So what that would actually output when that's ran would be something like this. Uh, the executable name, which is git, followed by the first arg, which is just commit, followed by the next arg, which is dash m space, and then in quotes, this keyword. This keyword is in double parentheses. So that means that it's going to find um, whatever this keyword is linked up to in the forms. So down here we have a data arg name, and it also has that same keyword in it. So the content, um, the value, of this uh, input text box will go here. So this message keyword is replaced by the value of this UI element that has a matching data arg name. So we'd put in whatever the user typed there. And then after that, we have this right here, another keyword, and it's going to go and find something with a matching data arg name and then grab its value, which is dash force. So I'll come up here and that would be dash force. Um, but because this is not a text box and the value is being set here, we're using a checkbox, which means uh, if this form element 
is not checked, then this doesn't get sent out. So open this back up again, and we can see um, if this is checked, then the dash force goes with it. And if it's not, then it doesn't go with it. Um, you can also chain these things up into multiple, multiple keywords on the same line. So I can come down here and just put a space there. And this also means that um, if this checkbox isn't checked, the whole arg is not processed. So it skips this whole thing. So if it's not checked in this case, all of that wouldn't be sent out. So keep that in mind. Um, a better way of doing that typically though, if you wanted to force this to be um, sent out would be just to give it a required equals required. And that will make it so that the um, submit button here would be grayed out until the users type some message in. So um, there's your very basic thing, uh, introduction to how the form elements on the page interact with these command blocks. And these command blocks are what send things out. You'll notice that down here we've got the checkbox and then the text area. And above, we've got the text in the checkbox. And you'll see that it sends out in the arg order. So the UI elements do not have to be in the same order as these up here. So uh, you have complete control over the order that these will be sent out. And if it's better from a design perspective to put the, um, the part that controls this, this checkbox above everything else, then you can do that. And it doesn't have any effect on the way it's sent out. Um, you can also have uh, args that have no keywords at all. You can have multiple keywords in the same arg and there's a bunch more advanced stuff. I'm not gonna go into any more, but there's a ton more stuff to cover. Uh, if you're interested in this, there's a lot more videos I'm gonna be making, uh, stuff that covers the more advanced features of the command blocks and how to do custom work in here. Um, there's a lot more advanced things that certain elements will give you. Um, if you'd like to watch a video that covers start to finish making a project, um, I'll show you this guy here. Uh, this is, I made a half an hour video of how to create this. Um, everything from making the icon to all of the HTML for the code here for um, these drag and drop boxes and the slider and this drop down box and uh, setting up two different executables to be ran separately if you are encoding something or decoding it. So if you'd like to watch that, there's a link in the description. Um, I'll also put a link here on the screen. And uh, if you want to see any more tutorials, go to yugui.io and leave any questions you have uh, below or on our subreddit. Thanks for watching.